Through the 1920s into the 1930s, the Roots Group expanded rapidly from distributors to manufacturers and became one of the biggest car companies in the world. And in 1938, they opened this place, Len House, a fantastic masterpiece of modern Art Deco architecture. And it only stopped being a car showroom a year ago in 2019. It's about to be sympathetically redeveloped into apartments and commercial space. But before that happens, I've got the chance to look around what was one of the most impressive Art Deco car showrooms in the country, if not the world. So this workshop was the epicenter of the Roots network. The company had grown massively in a very short time, from 1895, when William Root Sr. had started a company selling and servicing bicycles in Goudhurst in Kent. And they rapidly expanded into the early 1900s, opening a second premises in Hawkehurst, also near Maidstone in Kent. And through that time, his son, Billy and Reggie, were progressing in their career, until in 1914, Billy opened his first car sales showroom in the High Street in Maidstone, just off Pudding Lane, which is literally a stone's throw from here. Car manufacturers and other engineering companies were called upon to do as much for the war effort as they could. And so Roots stepped up to the plate. On this site, for, for a long time, there had been a tannery using the River Len and its mill pond to drive the tannery works. They would moved in there and opened up the Len Engineering Works. So from 1917 onwards, they were reconditioning aero engines for the war effort. And that war work paid big money to the company and kept the company going into the post-war years when they expanded massively, becoming agents for many more car firms, including people like Kleino, who have long since gone, becoming the UK agents for GM, taking on Chevy and Buick dealerships, and starting to buy rival dealerships from around the country. In fact, Robbins and Day, who were the Peugeot dealer who occupied this until 2019, were only up the road in Rochester, and they bought them in 1921 or 22. They continue to grow on the site of the Mill Lane showroom now, there was a showroom, but it was an older style building and not really up to the needs they had. During the early 30s, Howard & Schuster, an architectural firm with a history of Art Deco, modern and car dealerships, was commissioned to create something truly impressive. And this was it. Work started in 1937 and the place opened in April the 4th, 1938. And it was the biggest car showroom in Britain. It's weirdly haunting walking around this place when it's just completely deserted, just knowing how busy it was for so many years. This is all the end of Robinson Day's uh, tenure in this place when they up sticks, moved everything out into a business park down the road to, to more modern current premises. So, walking through the offices. So these, this huge space, which feels just so desolate now I'm on my own in here, was the Roots Workshops from 1938 to 39 when they completed this section of the building up until 2019. This was alive with cars being repaired, serviced, MOT'd, accident damage in the body shop. Everything main dealer car repair related you can think of happened in this room and not just in this massive cathedral of a room upstairs as well that is a hugely strong reinforced ceiling look how thick those concrete reinforced girders are I'll show you more detail in a moment when I walk you up the ramp but this ramp like so much else in this building is listed so when it's redeveloped this is staying which is a what marvelous feature now bear in mind how many concessions and manufacturers Roots were looking after back in the 30s and 40s. They, in the 20s, looked after Austin, but in the 30s, they owned Hillman and Humber. They were looking after Sunbeam, Talbot, Singer, Comer and Carrier commercials. So this was just alive. So upstairs is as big again as this and would have been filled with vehicles. And during the Second World War, every comma truck that went out to Europe to fight came down this ramp at some point. That's quite an incredible thought.
But before I walk you upstairs, let's take a look at the rest of this lower story. Under the ramp, we've got washrooms, toilets, storage area. Let's go and look at that in a second. Look at all of these two post ramps. I wish I brought some spanners now. I've got an estate car parked outside. I'm sure I could get one of these in the boot. These windows, this is typical 1930s modern style. Just huge areas of glass bringing so much light into this room. This probably isn't 1930s equipment, it just looks very dirty. You have to watch your footing around here because there is old equipment, pits, you name it, oil on the floors. I can't really see out because there's a security screening, but beyond this is the River Len, which powered the original tannery on this site. All the staircases here in this building are listed as well. So much of the fabric of the building has to stay and there are the plans are incredible for the redevelopment of this place. Have you paid? Well, not if I can help it. Okay, let's take a look at that ceiling. Look at these concrete bars. This entire building is a steel frame with reinforced concrete structure and a curtain wall of brick and reconstituted concrete and these big glass curtains. And it is it's just a fabulous, fabulous place. It's really interesting to think what is original to the 30s, what survived through the 50s and 60s to the Second World War, and what's modern, what's from the, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s. Peugeot 405 diesel Haynes manual. You would think main dealer wouldn't need to be referring to the Haynes manual, but you never know. And these old tools, which I guess are out of date for current cars, are just sitting here under the bench. This is the storage area underneath the stairs. Quality assurance quarantine area. Very apt at the moment. Oh, there's a Simca 1100 book down there. Watching my step into here. Old filing cabinets. I don't know what you can see. There's just the light of my phone lighting this up. Simca 1300. Oh my word, that's in the Heinz manuals. That's in 610 chassis and body book. My word. Air conditioning R314. This is an absolute time warp of information. 1960, oh, are you seeing this? Ferodo 1960 trade catalog. Simca 1100 service guide. Service guides for the Humber Hillman Sunbeam Chrysler 180 slash two van. Comma carrier workshop manual. What year is this from? I'll have to take this outside to look. This is just remarkable. Comma carrier workshop manual, forward control models, route service, oh my word. This stuff I really hope can be saved. Hillman Hunter workshop manual for the entire range, Chrysler 160, 160 GT. Porsche workshop manual type 356A, wow. That's not looking its best though, that looks like a, <laughs> like a health hazard to be honest. Oh my word, a Matra, Matra Rancho workshop manual. And a Chrysler Sunbeam workshop manual. I actually know two people with Chrysler Sunbeams. I might have to ask if I can borrow this for them. 
Ah, am avut. Ah, well, I'm glad I stepped into that little cubby hole. That's incredible in there. Right, now let's go upstairs up the ramp and see what we can find. It's actually surprisingly steep. And looking up from here, you can see this gloss zigzag roof, which is a real common feature of 1930s and 40s British industrial buildings. These huge windows. This place is just enormous. It's incredible, this is a workshop, borderline factory, and yet it's still got these nice little details, like this curved off concrete on the end here, and these fantastic windows. Such a beautifully light building, so airy. Ah, I may have just broken some rules here. Pedestrians must not use the ramp. Oopsie. This is quite significant, especially on older cars. No vehicle to descend the ramp unless engine running in gear, brake check before descent. Wise words. Now through here, this is the upper story and it, it still smells like it actually. This was the body shop and the paint shop. Even though everything is gone, that kind of smell of paint and thinners is just still in the air, you can taste it almost. But uh, interestingly, you can't see it on this side of the wall, but on the outside, you can see three big window frames with lintels at the bottom. From 1937, 38, when this place was being built, they planned it with three big windows, but they never went in because it was the paint shop, so you don't want windows in the paint shop, and so they were bricked in before the glass ever arrived. But they never took the lintels out. <coughs> Gosh, does anyone need any Renault, Peugeot or Citroen connectors? This is quite incredible. The stuff that was just left behind when the company went. Light bulbs. stuff they got left behind. I guess this is the workshop office. Oh, body jig. How do I just walk straight past a body jig without even noticing it? Serious equipment up here. Pile of brand new floor mats never used. Ah, oh, here we can have a better view of the river. If I open this window, if the window will open. Oh no, it won't, it's stuck. This here is a better view of the mill pond. I'll try and get this on the drone. It'll be much clearer. Big garage door entrance to the body shop. Or the paint shop, I imagine. No entry. What do we think this is from? I'm gonna say a mini. It's very tiny, it's quite flat despite the curve in it. It's a front windscreen, clearly, and that logo looks very Rover-esque in that font. So I'm going to say this is a Mini's front windscreen. There's all kinds of things. This is a 
quarter light from something. It's a Peugeot Citroen, doesn't say what though. Some inside trim, probably from the boot of a Peugeot or Citroen. Uh, some tinted material, again, from a Peugeot or Citroen. All these bits of body, these panels and parts that are just lying around, just abandoned. There's a tail light from a very current model Peugeot. This is just amazing. Now take a look up at this ceiling. The redevelopment plans for this place um, are quite amazing. I mean, I was, I've known this building for my entire life, having sort of grown up in this area, and I was really worried that the cost of renovating it would have meant it might be pulled down even though it's listed or have something horrible happen to it. It's going to be really sympathetically put back together. And they're going to take out these lights and put a third floor above here, but set right back from the road so you can't actually see it from downstairs, which is an amazing use of, of the building. And the developer has been incredibly lucky in that this floor, this floor here, where you've seen the beams downstairs and the ceiling, was designed to carry lorries, HGVs. So second floor apartments are not going to be a weight issue one little bit. Now we have the car park. Now if I zoom in on this tower, which is at the focal point of this whole building from the frontage on Mill Street, at night, the top of this building was lit up with 700 feet of neon lights. A real spectacle. And once this uh, recommissioning and redevelopment is done, it's going to be replaced in LED with the word roots put back on top of this beautiful Art Deco tower. We can even go up on the roof. Wow, it's an amazing view up here. This is going to be apartments on top of here, which is gonna be quite a cool place to live on top of the Roots car factory with a pretty cool view of Maidstone. These old tent type top factory roof skylight things are gonna go and there will be rooms up here with an amazing view of the town. Looking over the side, looking down at the River Len in its culvert, the old Len mill pond which powered what started this entire car company in the first place. Now, let's go into the staircase and apart from a lot of bird poo and a dead pigeon, you can find an original 1930s staircase. I do love these kind of twisted wooden metal staircases you find in so many 30s buildings that look really elegant. And underneath this rubber flooring, it's stuff called terrazzo. I can't lift it up with glued down. Which is a beautiful kind of polished concrete. It's immensely expensive to install, but incredibly tough. So if they can get this uh, rubberized stuff off it, it will be very beautiful indeed. We're coming to a stairwell here. Now we have offices, because this corner overlooking the mill pond was the office section of the building. Now I've walked through a store cupboard now. Looking into a roof area because so much of this was double height but then it was mezzanined and false roofed off over the years. I imagine this is the uh, was a window just there, cupboard from the 60s. These full height windows are beautiful. And here we have back out to the mill pond again. Oh, more history. Advertising, it says on the front. Is there anything in here that's worth looking at? I hope. Oh, Haynes of Maystone, another big Ford rival in the area. Here we have, oh, this must be from the 70s, I guess. The Kentish Gazette advert. This is a cuttings book of all the adverts from the Northgate Garage Renault, oh dear. Uh, Avenger, GL, Avenger GL Saloon. There's no dates. I wish there were dates on here. Wow, a regal estate. 
of someone's job, April 1975, someone's job was to go through the local papers where they'd advertised and cut and keep them for... Wow. God, I hope someone saves this. Virgo 305, the best estate car in Britain. Some glass there, I won't put that. So someone will get hurt. Oh, old photos. A photo from 1959 of Roots. I'm not sure where this area is, hang on. Jim Bowen? It wasn't Jim Bowen. It was Humber, Hillman, and Comma, or possibly Carrier Works. And I'm going to say the late 30s, early 40s. Oh, this I believe is the uh, Robinson Day Workshop in Rochester. It is, yes it is, yes there's a, a caption on here. Rochester High Street, November 1944. Wow. These must be other routes, areas. History of the Rochester Motor Company. Ah, of, yeah, of Roots as it was. Roots used cars, I wonder where that was. Oh, this is fascinating. This is obviously the uh, law, late 50s, early 60s we're looking at here. Someone might recognise the cars and indeed the train. £179 for a Humber. Bargain. More routes used cars. I wonder what Leonard's of Rochester did. Routes 1949, I don't know where that is. Back of the Rochester place maybe? A truck from some time. This is amazing. This is absolutely astonishing stuff. So back in 99, Roots was doing well. Right, let's carry on with the tour. More offices. Oh, here's a nice view of the workshops. So here we go. That's the uh, store cupboard view of the, the workshop on the ramp. More kitchen, more stairs going up. Where does this go? Oh, we're back into the, um, back where we started. Oh, okay, here we go. Now we'll come back here in a minute. This is the link, this is virtually the bridge that you see above the car park. So looking down through this plastic stuff on the glass. We cross, we cross another listed staircase, which will be terrazzo again underneath that. And here we go. This is possibly the most haunting room in the building. The just atmosphere in here is incredible. In the late 80s, this room above the showroom became a snooker hall and bar. And it still is, all here. Jimmy Whirlwind White played here in his youth. You can hear the buses running outside. There's pigeon poop everywhere, unfortunately. You know, the buses and someone having a massive row on a phone outside. It's quite creepy because you can sort of still smell the beer and the carpet and the fags in the air. And there's a bit of a breeze through here as well. It makes the doors blow every now and then. This is like the Winchester bar. Amazing.
like everywhere else, it's only closed down very recently. Now, back to the staircase. Look at this handrail. It's like a chrome handrail. If this rubber stuff wasn't on here, this would be beautiful with the amazing terrazzo underneath it. This is really, really class stuff. Ah, dead end, I'm back out to the front again. Okay. Let's go back through on the inside. different staircase. Again, look at this beautiful twisting wood handle. It's just lovely craftsmanship from the 30s. Back down to the main stairwell in the front. as well, I didn't realise that. Which is storage. Old printers, racking, bits of paper. Not that exciting. Oh, an old Peugeot sign. Ready to rent. Peugeot rental, it's probably about 80s, I reckon. Back up again. Here we are at service reception again, where we came in. And one area I forgot to walk through a second ago, walking to the main workshop, is of course the stores. Look at all this racking. This would have been rammed with bits of Peugeot until, well, just a few months ago, really. There's more of it above me as well. And you can see how solid this building is. I'm going to say they don't build them like they used to, they're not kidding. And the river looks delightful today. So now I am in the 1930s original showroom, although you can't really tell anymore because I guess sometime in the, probably the 70s or 80s, a lot of the original 30s deco was uh, panelled over this um, full ceiling and this uh, kind of uh, light internal wall because if you look at the original photos you can see amazing beautiful bits of architrave, uh, nice ceiling, columns, all the good stuff you see in 1930s buildings. Oh wow, 1930s kitchen. <laughs> Cup of tea anyone? Whoops. Oh wow, here's a good bit of memorabilia. The Peugeot RCZ, which is a great little two-door coupe thing, which you hardly ever see around. But that'd be a cool thing to have in the garage. I quite like that. Here are the salesman's offices, the general manager's office. Hopefully by the time you see this, there'll be some 1930s, 40s and 50s pictures I can drop in, which I'm looking for as we speak. Now behind the showroom, we walk through into what says here, the handover area, which is where customers would have come to have their new car passed to them for the first time. And here we have these rather elegant stairs. Look at this kind of waterfall balustrade. Very typical Art Deco motif. And the stairs that go up into, I don't know where actually. The two halves of the building are separated by the snooker hall in the middle, so you can't walk from one to the other at the moment. 
So let's see where these stairs go. Because we are kind of underneath that lovely tower at the minute we were looking, that we were looking at from the other side of the building in the workshop. We have a skylight. I can't see what's beyond there. Ah, we have a key code. Can't go any further. No. Look at this lovely, lovely banister. This is looks like cast aluminium. They did car dealerships grandly back in the 30s. So from this big shutter door, it would have been quite an exciting first drive in your new car, whether it was a Peugeot up until recently, or a tall but before that, a Chrysler, a Humber, a Hillman, a Singer, a Sunbeam, who knows what else would have been handed over to the new customer that have taken their keys and driven off in their new car from this very room for, for 81 years. Although it's sad that this building will no longer be part of the motor trade after eight decades and that Robinson Day, the last link with the Roots Group, has now finally gone from the place, I am hugely relieved to know that its future is safe and it's going to be sympathetically restored and for the, and for the first time in my lifetime we'll be able to see it in its original 1930s form. That's something to look forward to. Mm -hmm.